Posture. Students can be intimidated by the size of the tuba and just handling it can be problematic for smaller players. I hope that no one is ever scared away from playing the tuba just because of their stature and there are easy solutions to most size concerns. When I first started playing, I was very small and I'm only 5'7 now. My first tuba was a full-size fiberglass sousaphone that was certainly not an ideal instrument, but my teacher was able to help me by providing a stand that held the instrument. All I had to do was crawl in and try to make great sounds. Through the years, I have found strategies that helped me as I played different tubas of various sizes and configurations, and I've been able to help students of every size find solutions to their problems. I hope to help you all work towards the most effortless music making on the tuba. The instrument should sit comfortably on your lap, rest on the chair, or a stand in front of the chair. The main objective is to make sure that the horn is balanced on a stable base and not supported by muscles that are under tension. The mouthpiece should come naturally to the face so that the player doesn't need to stretch or slouch. The lead pipe should create a slight downward angle from the face. This is one of the best ways to avoid a possible embouchure formation problem. I'll go into detail on embouchure in another video, but understand that minor posture problems create significant playing problems as students develop and grow. For most beginning students, the lead pipe sits too high, and in an effort to reach the mouthpiece, they will angle the head and thrust the jaw forward. This creates an upward angle to the air that is not initially prohibitive of success, uh, but this method results in a problem with range and articulation as students attempt more difficult music. Ultimately, we should strive for a posture that is appropriate for the current size of the student and offers students flexibility needed as they grow. We can adjust the height of the lead pipe by angling the tuba. The tuba usually rests at a slight angle but can be angled anywhere from perpendicular to 45 degrees. The lowest lead pipe height will be when the instrument is straight up and down. And as we lean the tuba, the height will be slightly higher. I prefer the instrument to be angled at the halfway point between perpendicular and 45 degrees. And if significant adjustments need to be made, by far the most effective method is through the use of a tuba stand. There are several manufacturers of these stands, but all work roughly the same. It sits in front of the chair and can be raised or lowered to a wide variety of heights. I will say that I often wish that stands could lower farther for many beginners because the height of many beginning band chairs is quite low. The stands tend to work very well for chairs that are full adult height, and you will want to make sure that you have access to a chair that, is, that doesn't compromise the lower height as it's usually a problem that we're trying to address. These stands are usually less than $100 and are a great investment for players of all ages. Tubas come in many sizes and configurations. Valves can either be on top of the instrument or in front. I have a strong preference for front action tubas as it gives the player a better use of the left hand for balancing the instrument and for slide access. Many beginning models, though, are top-action tubas. This is a top-action tuba. The same playing principles apply, and we should be looking for the same height and lead pipe angle when examining posture. Understand, though, that with these configurations, they change the way that we handle the tuba when at rest. Front-action tubas will naturally rest to the left of the player when putting the tuba down, but top-action tubas will rest to the right. It is insignificant when you are playing by yourself, but when in a section, it is important for front action tubas to sit to the left and top action tubas to the right. When players put their instruments down, they will be facing away from each other and remove the potential for the instruments to bang together. When playing, 
This also creates a scenario where students have better vision of one another and, and could share a music stand, although I would strongly encourage every player to have their own stand and music. Since tubas spend a lot of time resting, you will want to make sure that resting the tuba on the floor is comfortable and safe. Make sure that you have a good amount of space between you and your section mates and that the floor is free from bags or books since we will be using that space for the tuba. Your leg can serve as a comfortable pivot point for you to easily roll the instrument down to rest on the bell. Be careful that the tuba rests gently and it doesn't slam into the floor, especially with a lot of pressure on one side of the bell. You can often see bell damage that is a result of careless approach to resting the tuba. To return to the playing position from the resting position, we simply brace the tuba against the leg and roll the instrument back onto the lap. This technique uses leverage to minimize the strain on the back and helps smaller players handle the weight of the instrument. A couple quick tips that have helped many players. If you can't afford a tuba stand, you can raise the height of the tuba by placing a block of wood under the tuba. This one I've covered in shelf liner to give it a little extra grip. If you need the tuba to be lower, you can sit on a pillow or books and rest the tube on the chair. If the chair isn't big enough for you and the tuba, you can turn at a 45 degree angle so that the tuba has more room to rest. And if you are able to play with the tuba on your lap, one thing to prevent the instrument from sliding is just using the same shelf liner on your left leg. Students will often need reinforcements of all these posture concepts. We change physically and change equipment. We must always be observing to ensure that this aspect of playing remains an element that promotes ease of play and does not change for the worse just simply because a student grows. I hope this video helps you and your students get comfortable with the tuba. Thanks for watching.